Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome along to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show, where we're reflecting on... The, I didn't even mention the number of episodes we've had now. Ah, uh, no, that's true. I've ruined it by mentioning it. I was it. just reflecting on the fact that Scottish footballers could never say that they were top of the group, really, could they? <laughs> Sorry. Did a little cricket reference there. Oh, I see what you mean. T20 cricket. <laughs> I liked you playing a little musical uh, interlude during the news as well. That was very good. Oh, thank you. I like to liven up the news when possible. <laughs> Once again, this will be nothing to the people on the podcast. Sorry, <laughs> people on the podcast. Hello, <laughs> listeners on the podcast. <laughs> to be honest, it means very little to me. I, I wasn't paying too much attention to the news. The Scottish cricket, yes, I've got it now. Yes, yeah. And the musical interlude. Uh, and the musical interlude. <laughs> and the fact that the Scottish cricketers are now all saying, you'll never sing that. Top of the group, you'll never sing that to Ali McCoyst and various others. Uh, anyway, welcome along. Hello, it's the Wicked Wanderers show. Thank and you so Tom much and Colin. for bringing all that up. <laughs> That's quite all right. Um, well, you know, it says in our trail, uh, old things from Bob, so I'm just getting in early with the odd <laughs> things this week. Um, but we do, we have <laughs> That'll got... That'll be in a future trail. We have got a lot of normal things as well. Oh, yes. Um, including hearing from Gareth Ainsworth after the uh, Yorkshire Odyssey... Uh, that we, we took part in uh, beating Doncaster or Doncaster depending on your preference uh, and drawing away a very decent point away at Rotherham I was going to say any night but definitely a Tuesday night to come away from Rotherham uh, with a point and, and the clean sheet continues as well Indeed it was a defensive gritty display apparently uh, and yeah they, they did rather well I think to come away with, with a point considering that Rotherham were fifth uh, a bit of a shame that we've dropped down one. Slightly annoying that Plymouth and also Sunderland won. It'd be nice if Plymouth could start dropping a few points. Because it looked like Oxford were doing us a favour early on, didn't it? They it did, yes. Plymouth, they yeah. up. Yeah, and, and then, yeah, it all, all went a bit wrong. Uh, but anyway, and we have crew this Saturday. Uh, crew who? Crew who? <laughs> uh, Alexandra? Yes, that's him. Uh, and Scott Kashkit returning to Adams Park, which will be quite entertaining, but hopefully... He's not got any plans for a last-minute winner or scoring another goal, as no, we used to sing. But there will be fireworks. There will be fireworks, yes. Before and after kick-off, apparently. Oh, very exciting. We oh. like our fireworks. <laughs> also, this week, we'll be hearing from uh, former midfielder Steve Thompson. we will be yeah, hearing his memories, including uh, news of a treatment table collapsing. Ooh, and you've been speaking to Jason McCarthy as well. I have, yeah. Lots to look forward to uh, this hour. But first, as Bob mentioned, we'll reflect on uh, two games in Yorkshire... Uh, I think that's how they say it. <laughs> I used to be much better you, at accents. You can never mention a place without Colin then trying to do a, a bit of an impression uh, of, of that place. And no, that. something similar happened in, early in the week with Plymouth. I did very badly with that. No, I can I can well imagine, yes. Uh, but yes, let's start with Donny. Uh, Donny, yeah. 2-0 uh, uh, up after 17 minutes. That was quite good. Uh, if, if, like me, you were probably thinking, oh, it's, again, it's a bit like Gillian the previous week. Oh, it's going to be one of, those, one of those weeks where we score seven or eight goals. It's, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be on the vidi printer where it's going to say the, the, you know, the, actually the word of in the brackets. amount of goals. And then, of course, we didn't score any more. So, so it was only two in the end. Because I think we did say this last week as well, but it's so satisfying, isn't it? When you, uh, it must be for the players and the manager as well, but to start a game uh, with a goal yeah. in, inside the first five minutes and then to double that advantage as well. Completely. Uh, Anthony Stewart scoring after two minutes for us um, and then Akin Fenwa uh, scoring after 17. Uh, and brilliant. And Akin Fenwa playing a whole hour. Obviously, Sam Vokes not being there um, because his wife was giving birth. Um, congratulations to the Vokeses. Yes, definitely. Um, but yeah, really, really good. Uh, just excellent to, to go 2 nil up as you say so early on and really it it was pretty pretty comfortable from there on in and yeah i think probably with one eye on tuesday night we didn't really necessarily have to exert ourselves anymore uh but great to overcome what was clearly a potential banana skin because uh, uh doncaster had actually done quite well in the last couple of games before they played us and as we touched on in the intro as well and i'm sure we'll mention when looking back at rotherham as well but another clean sheet which is uh, fantastic to have such a great defensive display as well stocko stocko yes he's he's you know the the, the whole defense suddenly now seems to be be quite solid really doesn't it and you can you can rely on them which is what you want out of a defence. I was going to say, well, we'll hear from Jason McCarthy as well, who says, you know, that they're quite a settled yeah. uh, back line now as well. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's nice that in the last couple of games, they do seem to now have eradicated the, the problem of allowing the opposition to score with about 15 minutes to go, meaning that obviously we all get a bit stressed towards the end. Because you hear pundits, don't you, say, oh, it's best time to score just before half-time. But as mentioned in uh, the Doncaster game and the previous week as well, I think scoring early is, is very good I think, well. yeah, scoring early is always good. Um, and also, I think with regards to, to the half-time, I think actually scoring just after half-time is always quite good mm. because actually it completely ruins the opposition's team talk. Where, you know, you can imagine the, the manager saying, right, come on. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, two goals, as I say, after 17 minutes uh, against a team like Doncaster where they are struggling. And you can imagine that actually their players probably were 
thinking at that time, oh, right, OK, you know, we're not going to get anything out of this today. Let's get the manager's thoughts post-Doncaster. Here he is chatting to Phil. Note contains humour. Uh, Gareth, uh, another 2 0 win, a clean sheet, and that young Adebayo Akifema looks all right, doesn't he? Yeah, he's not a bad player, is he? You know, we might have to uh, think about extending his contract, but uh, no, I mean, complete performance for, for me. Um, a game very similar to last week, you know, we started out the traps like you wouldn't believe, the system would play sometimes, and, and, and what we saw um, in the week, uh, analysis wise, you know, Josh Hart again doing a cracking job on, on how we could break this team down. Um, we, we saw some weaknesses and, and we exploited them but at a risk of, of leaving ourselves open a little bit but once we get ahead you know we saw the game out fantastically well um, you know a change of formation midway into the second half was always the plan when, when Bale comes off we, we change formation um, to soak up pressure and soak up possession um, so the possession stats will be in Don, Doncaster's favour that doesn't worry me one, one slight bit um, because I think shots on target was restricted maybe to one chance I think they, they crossed by first half but um one real chance that David Stockdale had to, you know, everything else was sort of a, a P-roller into him. It was, there was no threat we didn't feel um, for big periods of that second half. And we always felt like we had the ability to break and score another one. Um, almost did, but um, it's going to be about picking the boys up now and, uh, and getting those legs ready for Tuesday because we've got a big trip to Rotherham. Um, and I, I want to make sure that we are very competitive in that game. Four wins on the bounce now, and he's staying up here for a few days. And the squad must be buzzing with the recent form and to spend some time together. Yeah, Rob Kuig is uh, is been very generous and, and the Kuig family uh, allowing us to stay up and prepare right for these games and it's the right thing to do you know we uh, we want to be a, a, a championship standard club um, and if we can manage to get that on the pitch as well I mean it's it's amazing you know to have the backers like that it's some of the things we've never been able to do before as well as bring the players in that I brought in you know Sully Kai Kai Jack Grimmer Anis Mamete and Sam Volks didn't even get on the pitch today um, but all four of those and, and Adam Prisbeck I want to leave him out. All four of those will be right behind the boys. They'll be so pleased. I know what it's like as a player, you know, if you don't contribute, you feel like you haven't took part. They take part. They, they're in there. Um, I thought the subs made a, a difference when we needed some energy. And they're all going to be, be needed in, in these coming weeks. So um, I've, I've got a real good group, you know, and I keep saying it. I'm so proud, you know. That there's emotion on that touchline going through me that you wouldn't believe sometimes with some of the closing down that David Wheeler joined the beat of people like that in the second half to, to keep this ball away, keep it at the other end of the pitch. Just um, just awesome to see. And the fans as well, you know. They turned up in, in good numbers today and got right behind us, kept cheering, kept singing throughout. Um, I asked for four wins after MK Dons. I looked at the fixtures and thought, we potentially could win all four of these. And even the eternal optimist here was uh, was would have taken nine or ten points, but the boys have delivered. I can't thank them enough, and they deserve all the plaudits they get. You alluded to the extra resource you've got now with the Kuhigs after that season in the Championship. How's the transition been from being Gareth Ainsworth with, with nothing at his disposal to now having a bit of a target on your mm -hmm. back with Wickham being fancied and, and having to manage a big squad and players and keeping everybody happy? How's that transition been? Uh, as long as you keep all of your values that you had when you had nothing. And that's an obvious thing. It sounds like a, a Hollywood film quote, but if you can keep your values when you had nothing, I think that's really important. And we have. We really have done. And, and I have, and I always will. I mean, you know, it's, it's tough, tough where I grew up. And, and, and to have this now, I'm very grateful and we'll never take it for granted. I think that's the thing. Not not that you expect it, that it's, it's a bonus. And if we can keep thinking like that and the boys can keep having this attitude of, our base is hard work, our base values is humility. Um, we're in a good place and, uh, and I want the fans to be proud of their club because we're keeping hold of these values because we were all together when we had nothing. Now we have things. Rob and Pete are super, super people getting behind us and, uh, and hopefully we can... Uh, we can pay back their faith as much as anyone else is by uh, achieving this year. Really pleased to uh, hear from Gareth, uh, who is really pleased uh, with, with well, literally everyone. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, I very much like the fact that there were still people chanting in the background. Which they were was, well up for it, weren't it's, they? It's like, well, hang on, the game's finished. Why, why oh, are you still home. Exactly. Why, Everyone's what, gone home. What are you still doing there? <laughs> <laughs> Missed the bus back, may as well enjoy the rest of the evening. Uh, and we keep hearing how we are now a championship club in everything other than actually 
status um and it, so it's really good to hear that actually the team stayed over in yorkshire mm. she did wonder well yeah okay is, is it worth them coming all the way back from donny to then face rotherham on the, the tuesday night and clearly other clubs would have you know, sure. b- big clubs uh, would have thought right okay well actually yeah we're, we'll we'll have a, a few away days you know we'll set up a camp in yorkshire and that's what we did and you think oh great you know and and many thanks yes to the kuhik family because clearly we wouldn't have been able to to afford that uh, in the the pre-kuhik days because i think Gareth mentioned it that it really must enhance the the preparations if you can do that as well not have to travel back and travel up and and I would think just as well a really good morale mm. uh, booster no you know, definitely it must be nice uh, all being away you know you you can imagine that yes I, I would imagine that they they had various sort of like team building type things and team bonding things and those can only help Yorkshire puddings Yorkshire puddings as well <laughs> Yorkshire tea it's all there um, but yeah, moving on to Rotherham and and no goals, unfortunately, but none conceded either. Which is no, no. Um, so uh, Ryan Taffazoli coming quite close uh, with a header, um, but really not the game had not many chances. Uh, which quite are, a battling display, quite as we very mentioned. very battling. Yeah, uh, on a chilly night up in Rotherham, uh, and fantastic, brilliant that we managed to get a point up there. Because if Doncaster was a bit of a banana skin, then this, this clearly was was far you know far, far more danger than that, considering that Rotherham are fifth, um, and as yeah. Uh, as we've already said, just a shame that Plymouth and Sunderland then, then both won, so that Sunderland went above us. So we're currently third. Um, um, and Sunderland have a game in hand as well. Wigan are below us um, as well, having a game in hand. Um, but we do still have a game in hand over Plymouth. So Tight at the top. Yeah, indeed it is. But uh, yes, uh, quite tight at the bottom as well, but more on that later because uh, Crew, of course, we played Doncaster, who are a bottom, and then Crew coming up, who are second from bottom, have only won once in League One. Uh, but more to come on that. Uh, let's get Gareth's thoughts once again, uh, speaking to Phil after the uh, the Tuesday night in Rotherham. It's a very similar styles, you know, let's get a ball forward. Um, big man all over the park, you know, and, uh, and I thought that um, the boys were superb, absolutely brilliant. They ain't going to be tested as, as tough as that. You know, um, with the physical aspect, with the uh, with the pressure that Rotherham put on us second half, I'm not going to be, you know, totally rose tinted glasses and say we didn't take some pressure. Of course we did, but first half we had the better chances and we could have converted a couple, which would have been nice. A great game, you know, a really good game, and tactically uh, we had to we had to be on it today. Some huge performances, some real huge performances, and I think the baseline now that three clean sheets. We've played a lot of the big teams away from home already as well. I'm really excited for the season. It's a, it's a proud one, that one tonight, and, uh, and a tough place. There won't be many teams come here and go away with uh, a draw or a win. We're definitely one of them. Dominic Gay back in midfield, first start as well. How do you think he got on tonight? Superb, as everyone was, you know. He cramped up at the end, which he's like to be. It's his uh, first start for a while. Um, and Curtis, the battling that Curtis Thompson does, wow, you know, you, you see him on Saturday and uh, looked a uh, little, little bit leggy. So to be able to change, bringing Dominic Gape in the side, wow, you know, and, and people like Daryl Horgan into the side, you know, Sam Volks into the side, these are names that would walk into teams in this league. And uh, and then Sully Kaika getting minutes, Brandon Hanlon coming on another handful, you know, so we have depth, you know, I feel for Anish and Jack really, the only two who haven't really featured this weekend, uh, but they're going to play a huge part as well, the two household names in this division, so... The result was really important tonight, not to get beat, and we've established that by hook or by crook. We uh, we we did well tonight, and I'm really really pleased with another clean sheet, a solid base to build from, and um, yeah, tough place to go. You had to ride a storm in the second half, but the injury time and there was lots of it. Wickham finished the stronger, and that, that must have pleased you from from a fitness point of view after two tough away days. Listen, teams have their moments. You know, whatever team you play, no matter who you play. Look at us at Man City. We had our moments, you know, we had that five minutes, that ten minutes, not, not much more away at City, but we did have a little bit. Teams will have moments, no matter where you are, home or away, they'll have moments. It's about standing up to these moments. And I think they had a good 20 minutes where they were they were shelling balls in, we couldn't get out of a half, the squeeze wasn't wasn't getting there because the balls were coming back in. And that's rather that's what you've got to you've got to put up with. And I think they're a great team. I think they've got a great manager. And I think if you're near at Rotherham at the end of the season, I will repay the comment to, to Paul Warren. He said this about Wickham. You'll be you'll be up and around it because they're a good side. Um, really, really pleased. And uh, like I say, picking the boys up now for crew on Saturday, which is a game that at home I want to be winning. 
must be looking forward to getting back to Adams Park uh, after setting the Football League era home uh, wins record looking to add to that yeah of course it'd be great to, to every time we win at home we're going to break a record which is brilliant for the boys but we are not going to be carried away we are not going to we're not going to get above ourselves humility is our biggest trait and it always will be while I'm at this club um, and I'm really really proud of the efforts not just the boys the physio team have worked tirelessly today um Kian and, and Isaac and Ali back at the training ground they've worked tirelessly to get these boys fit and get them and David Waits and, and Ben Sayers the sports science department just the fitness at the end there was fantastic so they need name checking they, they've been great for me and, uh, and I can't thank them enough for giving me a brilliant set of boys to pick from my choice to pick and uh, and that's tough sometimes but having everyone fit having everyone running towards the end and, and, and like you say finishing probably a little bit stronger than Rotherham it's brilliant to see but a point's what we take away. Really, really proud of that. We've, we've took six, I think, in the last two times we've been here, so we can't be greedy. Point will do. Um, it adds to our tally for the League One. And five days up in Yorkshire for two games. Uh, how's that been? And a, a new sensation for you as Wicked Manager, having the resource to stay up? I'm a Lancashire lad, you know. You're saying five days in Yorkshire. <laughs> I'm only joking. It's a lovely county. It's up north, and that's uh, that's all that um, that's all that matters to me. You know, when you see you know the, the, the hills and the valleys and, and everything and honestly it was brilliant it really was it, it's, uh, it's a breath of fresh air literally because uh, I love being up, up north in the country and, uh, and like I say it's, uh, it's really good of Rob Currig and, uh, and Pete Currig to put up the funds for us to stay in, uh, in you know in, in the hotels and in the places and uh, yeah it's been great you know I was going to say, there's a lot worse counties than Yorkshire, uh, believe me. <laughs> I'm really happy to stay up there, but um, we'll uh, we'll get back to Buckinghamshire now, get the boys prepared for what will be a tough game on Saturday against Crew Alexandra, and then we've got a week to, to regroup, refresh, um, and I think there's another mad run of games coming up, but um, really proud to be. Gareth Ainsworth there from the Yorkshire Tourist Board. <laughs> That surely Phil the next question was which counties are worse than Yorkshire because we're now all wondering there might be lots mightn't there can Gareth maybe he'll come up with one of those like lists of you know of, of rubbish places like that rough they guys. occasionally yeah, yeah exactly that they current you know occasionally mention like on the news you know <laughs> these are some of the worst places I've been to Rutland has been named the worst <laughs> county in Gareth Ainsworth's <laughs> county survey despite being in the north and sort of being a well-known football manager, he also goes around and, <laughs> and, and rates the counties of, of England. There's an ITV4 documentary on that. Definitely, definitely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Still to come on the Wicked Wonder Show, we'll hear from Steve Thompson in a few moments' time. We'll be catching up with current midfielder. No, he's not a midfielder, is he? Or is he? Uh, old Jay- defender. Defensive midfielder. Jason McCarthy. And uh, we'll be looking ahead to the visit of crew. Wing back. Wing back is definitely a yep. thing. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM, this is Wickham Sound. <laughs> Still to come on this week's uh, Wickham Wanderers show, we will be hearing from, is he a wing-back, is he a, a, a defensive midfielder? It's Jason McCarthy. Uh, we will also be reviewing how Wickham Wanderers women got on at the weekend as well. <laughs> it's almost rehearsed that bit. I think that was quite good. Yeah, I was slightly put off because you were air guitaring to the jingle before, <laughs> before we came back. You've got to enjoy the jingle. Uh, but first, uh, many thanks, and of course, as always, to the Wickham Wanderers Ex Players Association. Thank We've you. announced that their uh, thank you, big thank you to them. They've announced that their uh, dinner is now in the spring. It was due to be in November. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, looking forward. Are they going to gonna still like do it as if it's November? Like they're going to bring some conkers along and stuff. <laughs> We don't know how to answer that question. Some fireworks, because we're good at fireworks uh, at Adam's (laughs) Park. Might have some left over by then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yes, um, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, yes, uh, but uh, this week in our... (laughs) Our ex-player slot, if that's a thing, uh, we've been catching up with uh, Steve Thompson, who I'm sure you'll remember uh, being uh, a uh, fantastic midfielder in uh, the early 90s under Martin O'Neill, and we've been finding out how he became a Wickham Wanderer. I was living in Ryslip. I was in the Air Force at the time, playing for Slough, and um, John Reardon and Martin O'Neill came round to my house in the, in the summer of, uh, I think it was, 91. And... Um, I spoke to them and obviously I was in, in awe a bit of Martin with what he's, he'd done in the European Cup and for all his career for, for Nottingham Forest. And they come around, they tried to sign me that summer in 91, but for some reason, I, in the end, I, I stayed with Slough. I was still sort of with them and I stayed for another six months and uh, it wasn't until the January that I eventually eventually left and, and, and joined Wickham and should have done it six months earlier, really. 
That must be a bit special as well, because, so, you know, obviously a lot of players uh, at that time uh, were kind of part-time and, and have other jobs, obviously, but being in the RAF must have been a bit special too. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, and uh, working in London allowed me to 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 mix, um, you know, playing for the Air Force, we're playing for, for Wickham, until obviously I came out of the Air Force two or three years later. But yeah, I, I enjoyed my time in the Air Force, and I was lucky enough that the some of the people high up in where people are posted, managed to get me around to the London area. Uh, I mean, I, I could have been over in Germany or, or somewhere uh, in the back of nowhere, like, you know, so so I was, I was lucky in that respect. And you speak to former players and, and you really get the sense that, you know, the time that they were at the club was really special, but obviously that the period that you were there as well must have felt, must have felt pretty special too. Oh, yeah, it's, um, without doubt, it was my best, uh, I think it's three and a half years, I spent three and a half, four years, Without doubt, my best three and a half, four years in football. Uh, we won things. I played in a brilliant team with brilliant players, brilliant manager and brilliant people at the club. I've only uh, nothing but brilliant memories of uh, of my time at, at Wickham Wanderers. And obviously scoring at Wembley must be must be a real highlights for you as well. Yeah, I managed to do that on, on both occasions. I played there for, for Wickham Wanderers. Run Corn 4-1 in the trophy final which surprised everyone because I scored a header. And then in uh, Preston in the in the League Two playoff where I got the uh, the equaliser after they'd gone 1-0 up. Yeah, so so yeah, great memories of um of Wembley, but great great memories of the whole four years at Wickham. I was gonna say, were there any other sort of games or moments or, or goals that particularly stood out for you? Well those those two definitely stood out, the two at Wembley. Not not goal scoring, but the the semi final win at at Sutton when we'd been beaten in the home leg of the FA Trophy and we went to Sutton and absolutely destroyed them 4-0. I think Matty Crossy even scored a couple of goals that day and uh, we were celebrating and what a celebration in the changing rooms. Uh, you've probably heard the story but the uh, the physio table collapsed underneath the weight of players celebrating and I was quite fortunate that no one got injured for the final actually with underneath it. So yeah, great moments and uh, very enjoyable. It's, it's such a sort of key time, isn't it, in the club's history and, and getting promotion to the Football League and, as you say, in the FA Trophy and, and those, those other playoff finals as well. It must be, must be so, such a great sense of pride to be, in, to be involved in that time. Yeah, it was. I mean, uh, getting in the team first, that was the thing you had to do because you had such a good squad of players there and everyone, you know, if someone went out, someone came in and did brilliant. I remember when I, I first signed, actually, I think Steve Guppy had a, an injury, so they put me in um, Gupps' position for the first four or five games until he was back fit, and then I moved inside to my more normal position in centre midfield. So, yeah, everyone would fill in for each other, and everyone was great friends as well, probably the, the greatest social um, time in football as well, because uh, we played hard and we played well, but we also liked to have a, a good time as well, and it was, uh, but, yeah, fantastic days. It's great to hear the sort of camaraderie and the sort of behind the scenes kind of stories as well. Because obviously, as fans, you're you know you're watching the games, what you know, cheering the players on, but you, you don't get to know sort of what goes on sort of behind the scenes so much. And as I say, it must have been such a special time, especially playing under Martin O'Neill. Yeah, it was. It, it was. It was great, and it seemed every week we went in, there was a bigger crowd there the week after. Like you know, it was the crowds just kept growing, and the atmosphere in the inside the ground was fantastic. I remember one game we played. I think it was slow. We played at home. And you just thought, well, it's a league game. Slow, we're going quite well. They're up at about fifth. And I think we were at the top. And um, there were people up in the woods above where the, the, the I won't say new stand, because it's been there quite a while now, but where the large stand is now on the other side from the, the changing rooms, there were people watching up from up in the woods because they couldn't, couldn't get in. It was, uh, it was just fantastic atmosphere. It must have made it a bit more special as well, because obviously Adams Park was only, only quite new itself at the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how new it was when I moved, but I, I, I knew it was relatively new. Um, I don't think I'd ever had the uh, privilege of playing at the old uh, old Wickham Ground, but yeah, yeah, I knew it was uh, reasonably new, and it, and you know it, it was a, a great ground made ready for non-league, and obviously the improvements that they've done since they've been a, a league club has been fantastic. And, and you've already touched on it a bit, but I mean, it must be so great to have played with such a, a great group of players that that you well, whilst you were at the club as well. That you know, especially in the sort of obviously midfield, well, in all, all positions, to be honest. 
yeah, wonderful players. You know, you go through the names of Dave Carroll, Steve Guppy, uh, Keith Scott, Jason Cousins, Matt Crosley, Glenn Creaser, Terry Evans, Simon Stapleton, Keith Ryan. Uh, and I, c- I could go on and, and name another 10 as well. And all great players and all great lads as well. And like I said, the, the camaraderie, no one should ever underestimate. We we did have good players, but the camaraderie meant that no one else had a chance. And I think we, we won the league by so many points, didn't we, that year that we, we won the uh, conference. I was going to say, it must have felt like literally the whole town was behind you as well. And as you say, when, you, yeah. when you're at Wembley as well, such a, such a great following there too. Yeah, yeah, going to Preston and there was, you know, Preston were a, a, a big club going to Wembley to play Preston and you looked out and there were as many Wickham Wanderers, fa- Wanderers fans there as there were Preston North End fans and to play against, I think, one of the founder members of the of the Football League, I think they may be, um, and to play against them and match them with crowd and match them on the pitch, more than match them on the pitch, was was wonderful and and probably, you know, the, the best single moment of, of my four years at the club. And strange to think, obviously, that David Moyes was in the team then, and, and obviously the, the current Wickham manager now as well. Yeah, 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 David, they, and Gareth, yeah, Gareth played, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I don't think David enjoyed that game. I mean, obviously, he's gone on to have an um, amazing career, but he, he wouldn't have enjoyed that game. I, I know that Simon Garner playing up top and... Um, and us raiding from midfield from everywhere, Dave Carroll, Gups, everyone. Uh, it was a it was a hard day for Preston that day, and we were deserved winners. I mean, what's your overall kind of feeling of your time at the club? You must look back on it on it really fondly. Yeah, yeah, I um, I loved every every moment at Wickham. I was very sad to leave, and um, uh, felt you know I, I should have stayed for a, for another year, but it was sort of made impossible for me by the new manager that came in at the time who changed things around but yeah the the, the, the four years at the club I've nothing but fond memories um, of that time a fantastic career overall as well you're a semi-professional international that must have been a fantastic uh, privilege as well yeah yeah I got the I got the one game we played Wales and uh, yeah it was it was great my dad came up to watch it was a proud moment for the family for me to represent my country you know, I even got man of the match that day. I shouldn't say I got man of the match that day. So everything went well. Uh, obviously, it couldn't we couldn't play any more games of Wickham players because we went up into the to the league that year. So the year the year after, um, we were all banned from playing because we were league players. Then. Of course, and obviously after your time at Wickham, you went on to uh, have a still still fantastic career and also into management as well. Yeah, I joined Woking. Uh, I didn't know what you know. By the time I left Wickham, I was. Uh, 32 and joined uh, Woking. Didn't know what um, what lay ahead really because they were a, a conference club. But uh, yeah, we had a great run. We came second in the league. We were hoping that we would go up as well, and I would I would do that again as I'd done at, at Wickham because Stevenage won the league but weren't allowed up with their ground. But unfortunately, in those days, it was a bit of a close shot. They didn't let the team that comes second go in, and another trophy final as well. Um, I didn't manage to score in that one, but we did win it. So I um, really, really feel privileged to have played three times at, at the old Wembley and won three times. And how did management compare? How did, how did it being sort of on the other side, if you like? Yeah, well, most of my time that when I joined Yeovil, I became the assistant manager and I served as assistant manager to four or five different managers and then managed also for, for one season in League One. Um, we finished... 15th in League One that year. So I enjoyed it. Um, it you know, it was, it's, it's tough. There's a lot more pressure on you as a person, as a manager. But uh, yeah, to, to manage for one year in, in League One and then be uh, number two or assistant manager, first team coach to four or five over, over the other nine or ten years in the conference and the football league was, uh, yeah, it gives you a, a, a more general insight into into football from the other side, not just playing. And I'm sure fans would be keen to know what you're doing these days. I'm doing a, a little bit of work with the college team down at Weymouth College, uh, the football team there. So I go in two days a week and do the practical stuff uh, with them. And I'm also uh, doing a driving job as well um, for a company. 
So I combine the two really, driving and uh, and coaching. And are you, are you still in touch with uh, any of your ex teammates uh, from from your Wickham days? Yes, I. Uh, I've gone to a few of the reunions that have been held up at the ground. I think the last one was about four years ago. We all met up. Uh, there was numerous players there. Um, Terry Evans, uh, Keith Ryan, Keith Scott, Jason Cousins, lots of people there, Dave Carroll. So, yeah, Steve Guppy. It was it was great to meet up with, with, with all of them again. And hopefully we can do that again soon. Obviously, it's been a, a bit difficult in the last couple of years because we were sort of doing that every three or four years, but um, I think it's time we met up again. No, definitely. It must be so fantastic to have had those sort of shared experiences as well. Yeah, yeah, to, to talk about the old times. And uh, and also, you know, Wickham have done great as well since those old times. Uh, I went and watched them at Villa Park in the FA Cup semi-final uh, against Liverpool. So, uh, you know, Wickham have had good some good times as well in the league since then so so yeah it's it's uh, great to be associated with the club and I'm just really thankful that uh, I signed in the end even though it was six months later than I should have done and um, and that I got to meet such you know great players and great people and did you think when Wickham got to the, the you know the playoff uh, final and got to, through to the championship that must have really sort of reignited your, your memories of playing at Wembley yourself yeah, 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 it certainly did. And, uh, you know, it would have been nice. I, I think, obviously, with the COVID, it was pretty much impossible, but it would have been nice to, to go and watch a championship game. But hopefully uh, we can do that next season because they're flying high this year and hopefully be back and able to do that next season. No, definitely. And do you feel a real sense that, you know, you've kind of contributed to, to, to the Wickham's history and kind of where they are now is something that you've kind of helped to build, if you like, in that way? Yeah, you know, I think people will look upon that that team in the early nineties as a as a team that really started off the the push from Wickham being a um, non league club to to what they are now, you know, a a league club and who's been a league club and consolidated well and are a very good league club, run well, and, and I think people will will you know will remember that team as maybe the, the start of that sort of r- rising up to those standards. Because I guess, especially for younger fans, it must be quite tricky to kind of even, even comprehend that the players weren't even full-time at one point. It, not, it doesn't feel like that long ago. No, no. In fact, my first year, obviously, I couldn't get out of the Air Force st- straight away. But my first year, I was um, training with the boys, who were obviously went full-time in League Two. And uh, I had to come in when I could, so... Luckily, my job allowed me to, to stay fit as a, as a fitness instructor in the Air Force, really, you know. But, um, yeah, it was, um, it, was, um, it was great. It was great. Um, it was great as a non-league club, and it was fantastic those um, two years in, that I spent there in the league as well. And we very nearly, I, I think we just missed out on the playoffs from League One and managed to sign people that I'd watched on TV as... You know, over the previous years, people like Cyril Regis and and Nicky Reed from Man, Man City, and then Blackburn. Did you really get a sense of progression while you were at the club as well? You could really feel, you know, the team making great strides. Yeah, yeah, we we you know we got up pretty quickly. I think maybe the first year from from League Two at that in that playoff final, and um, and then League One. Like I said, that first year in League One, I think we finished seventh, and I think at the time. Playoffs were on, and obviously it was the third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth that um, that made the playoffs. So we were very close to getting a shot at going into the to the championship back in '94. I was going to say it, feel, it feels like such a long time ago, but at the same time, not that long ago as well. Yeah, well, a lot has happened since then for, for me. But um, yeah, that's uh, I, I remember. You know, I remember lots of the moments were vividly, really going to Orient and playing and just missing out. I think. That, we, when we played Orient on on getting into the um, into the playoffs into the championship, so yeah, it's uh, it is a long time ago, isn't it? Was it twenty twenty six years now? Yeah, sure. But as I say, just to, to touch on you know going to the playoff final and obviously the FA Trophy as well, and it must be such a great feeling knowing you had the support most of the town went, and it, it felt like such a great occasion. Yeah, I mean, when we came back after the uh, playoff final and the and the uh, the trophy final, the victory parades were fantastic. And of course, um, Ivor, the chairman, then used to keep us all up 
in the in the hotel there that he had and um yeah really great memories like i said my my uh, three four years at wickham were were without doubt my best and most enjoyable four years in football and you know i've had a, a good good career in terms of football so that but that was that was probably the the top the very top well it's been fantastic to speak to you thank you so much for for your time and for sharing your memories as well thank you thank you and i'd like to just say finally i I wish uh glenn creaser a, a fantastic recovery um i know you know that he had the 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 heart problem at game and um it's just so great that he's he's back and and s- sending messages on whatsapp and his sense of humor after what's happened is is a I'm privileged to, to, to know him as a, as a friend and, and as a person. No, fantastic. Echoed by uh, all of us here. In fact, our very first uh, show when we spoke to an ex-player, we, we chatted to him. So he was, he was our first, our first ex-player we had on. So uh, no, it's really, really great yeah. to hear that he's doing well. Great man, great man, great man and a, and a very underestimated player, great player too. Really nice to hear from Steve Thompson and, and lovely words there about uh, oh, really uh, Chris nice. as well, who obviously we wish all the best to you. And Len Worley as well, who's yes, recovering, yeah, of course. of course. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. Yeah, I enjoyed that. It was uh, that was really good and uh, fascinating as well. Um, and I, I'm always surprised to hear about Martin O'Neill approaching players mm. who have other careers, <laughs> and you just don't expect it. But of course, yes, you know Martin That's O'Neill works, was yeah. with us when we were non-league and when people did other things as well, <laughs> well as playing football. But you can't really imagine it now. No, exactly. Or well, when he was in charge at Leicester, going up to Robbie yeah, Savage. Indeed, yes. Yes, you know, oh, I went along to this painter and decorator, Robbie Savage, and said, oh, you fancy going and playing? Turn you into a star. Uh, still to come on the Wicked Wanderer show, uh, we'll be hearing from Jason McCarthy and uh, finding out about his new position. Is he originally a midfielder, or have I made that up? Uh, uh, possibly. Oh, OK. But he likes playing in defence as well. Uh, he, well. He used to be a rush goalie at school, apparently. <laughs> You've made that up, haven't you? I uh, have, yes. <laughs> and we'll be bringing you up to date with how Wickham Wanderers women are getting on here at Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Still to come on uh, the Wickham Wanderers show, we will be hearing uh, from is he a midfielder, is he a defender, Jason McCarthy. Uh, and we will also have a preview um, of the crew game. Not the crew. <laughs> a preview of the crew. <laughs> the crew. <laughs> not, Motley crew. Not the Columbus crew. The Rocksteady no. crew? Uh, uh, no, not, not them either. Whatever happened to the Rocksteady crew? <laughs> they only had one hit. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody remembers it of a certain age. <laughs> yes, yes. I think, I think you have to be to even get that reference at all. Uh, indeed. Um, and we're going to talk about Wicked Wondrous Women as well. Yes, do much you, to fit in. Do you want me to do that now? Uh <laughs> Go on then. Okay. Uh, uh, so, um, th- th- not not good news for Wickham Wanderers women, I'm afraid. Um, uh, so they lost four uh, nil in the uh, Bucks and Barks FA Cup um, on uh, Sunday. But at the same time, Cheshire are good um, and are actually in the, the division, at least one division above Wickham Wanderers women. Um, uh, but they take part now in the FA Cup proper, which I believe is the third qualifying round of I think the so, women's yes. FA Cup. Um, when they play Hearn Bay um, this Sunday, they are uh, away. Uh, at Two o'clock kickoff um, at the county ground. I'm not quite sure which county ground that is, um, but that, that's what it says uh, here on the on the FA website. <laughs> Great work. Uh, some sad news to bring you uh, as well that uh, former Wickham Wanderers player uh, Billy Gallagher, who uh, played for uh, the Wanderers in the early 60s, just for one season between I think it was 63 and 64, has uh, sadly passed away in the last couple of days. Obviously, our condolences to uh, Billy and his family. And um, he's, he's very well known in the Wickham area, say, you, isn't you he? Might, Particularly of people of a certain age. Definitely. And also, um, you might be uh, more aware uh, of the name from his uh, Elvis impersonations uh, with his group Billy and the Bonkers and raised uh, loads of money for scan appeal as well so i uh, did some great work in the community and also obviously uh, represented uh, the club as well so obviously our condolences as we say to uh, to billy his family and uh, uh, also uh, to uh, the uh, where am i going with this to, uh, <laughs> to, to to anyone else obviously connected with with billy as well so some sad news there uh, to bring you uh, now though i will look ahead to um the game against crew but also a bit of a look back as well with uh, what happened at doncaster and rotherham with someone who played in both of those games and uh, contributed uh, greatly to uh, the fantastic defensive display unbeaten and uh, not conceded a goal uh, i think in 300 minutes Wow, that's very impressive. I saw written down. <laughs> uh, sp- <laughs> sp- Jason You'd want McCarthy. to have our back four in a, in a fantasy league, wouldn't you? Absolutely. And Stocko as well. Absolutely. But it wasn't Stocko you spoke to. It was, it was the, the J-Mac, <laughs> Jason McCarthy. 
We're looking good. We're looking good. Um, like you said, especially defensively, I think we've had like a settled back five and uh, like the two holding midfield players as well. And I think that's really helped. And obviously Stocko in the net. And yeah, we've we've just felt that the last few games really tighten up. I think after the uh, Morecambe game where it was uh, obviously end-to-end and a great game, but I think that probably highlighted a few areas we needed to just touch up on. And I think since then we've um, we've looked really strong defensively, so we want to keep that going. And um, yeah, obviously the form with the results is great, but obviously it's, it's all it's all performance based as well here. So we focus on the performance first, and um, the result normally then takes care of itself. Must have been especially pleasing though to have come away with from four points from these last two games because Doncaster obviously for scrapping away at the bottom and, and Rotherham um, as you as you found on Tuesday uh, scrapping away near the top. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of our aim. Like going into the these two games, of course you want to win every game um, going for promotion. But um, we knew that Rotherham and Doncaster are both two really good sides and pose different threats. So we had to respect both of them. And to be fair, Tuesday night was a really tough game, probably the toughest game. I've played in so far this season so to come away with a point and a clean sheet I think it's brilliant and it keeps the momentum going as you were, you were saying earlier and um, we stayed up there so it was um, a really good round trip in the end It must feel so different as well to the opening 12 games of last season too Of course yeah completely it was like completely different we were um, there was a lot of discovery last year with a lot of the squad who haven't been in the championship before and stuff and this season I think we really got the know-how and the experience and I'll even go as far to say I feel like our squad is stronger this season and we're just really confident going into every game you know and um, you know we're not arrogant we're, we've got that humility we've got that humbleness as well but we're very confident going into every game with the squad we've got as you say, it feels like there's such a strength in depth at the squad, in, the, in the squad now, which is something which I guess you've not really had for for a while, and it really feels like that the new signings have settled in well too. Yeah, definitely. Like like the other night, um, obviously um, Gapey coming in and Horgie coming back in. You know, we're never we're never weaker when the gaffer decides to make a couple of changes or or whatever. We're never weaker. We we look at our bench every week, and it's so strong. Even it, maybe sometimes a couple of players missing out. And um, we're in a really, really good place in terms of our squad depth and quality. It's the best it's been since I've been here. Um, so, yeah, we're in a really good place. Like you said, all the new signers have settled in really, really well as well, which is which is great, which you'd expect to in, a, in an environment like this. And another real plus seems to be the adaptability of the team. We've spoken to their manager recently, and he said, you know, in certain games, if he's felt there needs to be a change at half-time, for example, in, in formation or style of play, uh, that that's something that, that you can sort of adapt to really quickly too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, since I've been here, I think we've played like every single formation <laughs> so, um, in one way or another. So we're obviously really enjoying the three at the back at the moment. And I think that's um, been a real success for us, um, even if you look at the back end of last season. But it's just good that in games, if we need to change and if we need to adapt to the opposition, we can do. And we've got the experience and the know-how and quality to do that. So, yeah. And as we talked about the unbeaten run, and especially at home with those seven league wins in a row, hopefully something we can add to uh, at the weekend, that must have been brought about a real good feeling in, in training as well. Yeah, de- like definitely. We're, we're loving playing at home at the moment. I think we, we all speak about it as well in the dressing room. Like, and It's been kind of annoying because we've had loads of away games, and we've, I think we're like a couple down at home in terms of we've played a lot more away. So we're looking forward to um, being back at home on Saturday and we feel like we've got the real backing of the fans behind us and there's a real good vibe and positivity around around the whole club and we feel that when we're at Adams Park. So we thrive off that and we want to keep the run going. We want this to be a real fortress this season. If you look at teams that have got promoted out of this league who have maybe gone unbeaten at home or like lost just one or two at home all season and we want that here and we want this to be a, a real fortress. And crew have only won once in the league this season. Does that make them more dangerous in a way? Well, every game in this league, you can't underestimate anyone. You know, every game is um, a different challenge. And, um, yeah, of course, we'll show crew the utmost respect. They've got a very good squad. Um, they've got a great player in Scott Cashkit, who we're going to have to be aware of as well. But, like I said, we're confident. We focus on ourselves. and We'll show crew the respect they deserve. But on Saturday, we'll be going for, for three points.
And you mentioned the home support. It does feel like attendance is starting to grow and people are starting to get a lot more behind their team as, as the sort of that, that run continues. Yeah, definitely. The, the support has been incredible this season. Uh, I was blown away with the people that came to Doncaster and to Rotherham. It's a, it's a big round trip, but especially on the Tuesday night. So the fans have been incredible this season. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I just feel so blessed to be at a club that have got great fans and I've got a really good personal affiliation with the fans. So, uh, you know, it's it's great. It's great. And I've, I think, like you said, this season there's been such a positivity and the connection between everyone around the club, but to the fans, the staff, the players, and everyone's thriving off that. Um, and if we can just keep that going and keep that mood and that that spirit going, then there's no reason that this season we can't be really successful. And um, the fans are playing a massive, massive part in that. And are you really pleased with your own game and, and your own running the team? Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I think this wing-back role is... It suits me perfectly. I think it's it's where I've played my best football in my career. Even at other clubs, I think, are wing back. And I, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think me and Jordan um, are really suited to them roles um, here on the other side too. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I've enjoyed the back end of last season. I'm really enjoying the start of this season. Um, um, I'm running the team. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I love it here. I think I think that's no secret. I think everyone knows that. Um, the gaffer here has got and Dobbo have got the best out of me. I think I've operated best here under under Dobbo and under the gaffer and my family are really settled here and I love it. I love this club. Um I feel like I'm I like I've I like people have mentioned before, I've gone away and um maybe tried to, to do things in the championship at other clubs but I really wanna I really wanna be part of this this like machine here that's driving this club to get to the championship and I want to be part of that and um, yeah I've, I've, I've learnt my lesson so to speak and <laughs> I'm, I'm really really enjoying my football um, so yeah and haven't you recently become a dad as well yeah well yeah I've got two I've got two children so I've got a two and a half year old and a um, a six month old so I've got my I've got my work cut out so <laughs> yeah <laughs> a real handful <laughs> for for um uh, for him. That sounded like a brave question because it sounded like you weren't quite sure. <laughs> and if he'd well, said no, that would have been slightly awkward. Yes, well, it's a pre recorded interview, so if he'd have said no, that wouldn't have been in it. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, you wouldn't have actually put it in. Uh, um, but with regards uh, to the, uh, uh, the. He makes it sound like Hotel California. Yes. Uh, the way that he sort of says, you know, you, you can never actually leave Wicked Wanderers. He's but one of those ones that comes so back. So nice again to hear that he is enjoying it and, uh, you know, as his, his new wing back position, but yeah. perhaps not that new now. No, no, uh, you know, he does sound. As I say, you, you can just tell from some of these players, and particularly the ones that have come back to Wickham um, a couple of times, clearly we do something right and we make players feel very comfortable uh, and that's how surely you get the best out of them I'm really interesting as well that he picked up just the fact that you know they don't necessarily um, assess a game on results but also the performance as well is what they look at yeah which is really interesting isn't it and it's the sort of thing you regularly hear in friendlies and mm. you think well maybe in the pizza Leyland Daft Cup <laughs> that that might be the case but really interesting to hear that actually yeah uh, for us in the league as well that they, they still look back at the things that, that went well and you would assume particularly in say a game against Doncaster or against Gillingham actually the things that didn't go quite so well because clearly when you've got the result in the bag so that's okay so so actually let's look at where we can improve and you definitely get the sense as well as you know the managers mentioned it players have mentioned it you know the strength and depth in the squad that the fact they can rotate the fact that he can uh, they can play different formations and, and different styles against different opponents yeah absolutely Absolutely brilliant. The fact that yeah, we can change, uh, you know, ch change what's going on in the middle of a game, which again I think previous Wickham teams possibly couldn't, because really, you know, we only had eleven players and maybe they very much had defined roles. Whereas now the fact that we're talking about Jason McCarthy as being is he a uh, defender, is he a midfielder, and you could say that again about somebody like mm. Jordan Abita, of course, um, you know, even JJ possibly with his you know occasionally um, uh, running, you know, and, and crossing the ball in. Uh, we've got so many versatile players in our squad which is just wonderful and the fact that we're able to say squad rather than team is brilliant absolutely and we heard um, Gareth mention a little earlier on as well it does feel like at the moment we had some quite big teams away and uh, now we've got some lower down in the table with all due respect to them uh, teams coming up at home I think what's really good about when you look at the bottom of the table at the moment is that you, you then see actually some of the sides that are down there that we've already beaten and you think well again that's the side uh, the sign of a side that actually is 
hopefully mm. going to at least to finish in the playoffs. Um, so currently you've got Shrewsbury, Charlton um, and Doncaster down there. And obviously we've beaten all, all of those. Uh, and hopefully we can add the name of Crew Alexandra to that uh, on Saturday. I'm quite surprised to see Fleetwood down there. Um, and then obviously Morecambe and Gillingham, um, who we have already beaten. And also Portsmouth in 17th, which again is a bit of a surprise. And they beat, um, the, who were at the time obviously league leaders, Sunderland 4-0. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, we did. And we then they've lost, that, heavily, yeah, they've exactly. lost heavily yeah, themselves. Yeah, it's it a funny old division, isn't it? In the way that people used to talk about the championship, and still do, but, but I would say that actually the championship does seem to be coming a little bit more like the, the, the Premier League in that the, the te- teams that come down uh, do look quite likely to go back up, whereas in League One, it's anybody's guess, isn't it? Well, I've read an interesting article recently, and it's just obviously stating the obvious, but eight top flight, former top flight teams are in League One. Oh wow yes okay do you want to name I was going to say there's a quick quiz question <laughs> eight come on then oh, a bit on who the are they uh, Sheffield Wednesday uh, yes okay um, this is tricky now isn't it Sunderland yep Portsmouth yep um, Wigan yes, yes very good I thought I was looking at that one thinking oh that's quite <laughs> quite tricky okay um, Bobby Robson Ipswich yep <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, of course and the club that Sam Allardyce seemed to be at forever Bolton yep of course I forgot Bolton how many are up to now that's five isn't it uh, and Nigel Atkins has just left them surprisingly Charlton of course yep <laughs> six is that six uh, we're, we're, yeah we must be getting there now uh, I'm, I'm now I've sort of like lost count, which is a bit, bit, <laughs> bit sick. Yeah, I think I think you've got them all. Oh, yeah. congratulations! Yeah, thank you very much. What do I win? Uh, you win uh, tickets to um, uh, whatever we're giving away uh, on the on the station at the moment. Oh, I can't excellent. remember what that is. What, oh, okay. what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean tickets to Nina Conti at which that's, one? That's the person. Yes. On the ninth of November. Yes. Yes. That's not anything to do with football at all. No, no. <laughs> Like, it's a prize, though, isn't it? It's a prize. Yeah, yes. And Colin hasn't really won, in case anyone's listening. No, because I'm not allowed to. to. Exactly. In terms of conditions say, of play. So that's definitely one of them. to report us to Ofcom or something like that. No, but back to Crew, obviously, who... <laughs> back to Crew. <laughs> who, who weren't in the top flight. But are, are a big team with a big history and have only won one league game uh, this season so far. Yeah, um, you know, their, their uh, statistics make fairly poor reading, uh, to be honest. Um, so, uh, and they lost as well um, to Sunderland on Tuesday night 4-0. Um, um, and yeah, you know, they, they are definitely struggling currently. 23rd in the division, having played 13, as you say, only 1-1. One, one. Uh, they've drawn 5 uh, and lost 7, scoring 9 goals and conceding 22. Um, so definitely you would feel that actually that is a game, uh, again, if we're serious about this getting promoted lark, uh, that really we should be winning. Uh, before the Sunderland defeat, they lost 3-0 at home to uh, Fleetwood, who are obviously also down at the bottom as well. Um, and then previously to that, um, one of the games that they managed to win... Uh, uh, was in the Leyland Daff uh, checker trade thingy uh, where they beat Wigan 2 now. And I also put this to you because I think you've got this in front of you as well. But you might have heard Gareth say a little earlier on that uh, quite a, a period coming up of uh, sort of games quite sort of relentless uh, as well with another international break coming up next month too, of course. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if that's called off. Um, and if you do a search at the moment, I think it's for Portsmouth because that's who we play mm. in the um, international break. Um, and the, there's various Portsmouth um, websites suggesting that the game might be called off and they've moved their Leyland Daff fixture um so that possibly they would have a complete two-week break and they clearly obviously don't know that we possibly might not actually say oh yeah we'll have the international break we got off, clearly we didn't do it last well. time. sorry haven't we got our game in hand coming up in november oh uh, yes we have against ipswich yes uh ipswich at home um we've also of course we should mention as well that we've got drawn against hartlepool united yes. away in the fa cup uh we believe that that game will be played on at the saturday at three o'clock we tried to get confirmation of that from the club but we hadn't didn't actually hear back because i didn't actually uh, send the text until about six o'clock uh, um but yes we believe that because today the fa cup games the televised games were all decided and we weren't mentioned so i'm guessing that we'll be away to hartlepool uh, on november the 6th with a three o'clock kickoff first round of the fa cup huh? that's uh, really always good. exciting isn't it Especially I, I, I really enjoyed it. So, team, I so I did watch um, the the draw on ICB on on Sunday um, just after one o'clock, and and it's great for the first round draw mm. as well because it goes on forever yes. with like 80, <laughs> 80 balls to draw out, uh, and yeah, and it was quite exciting. And personally, I was quite pleased about Hartlepool away because I haven't been there, so I am planning on going up there. 
Not many people can say that, can they? They were quite pleased about Hartlepool away. <laughs> yes, you'll never say that. You'll never say that. Hartlepool away. Oh, that's another nice that. seaside destination for you. Yeah, uh, the good fish and chips, I believe. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, not as good as Grimsby, but still not bad. Yeah, more food news uh, next week. Also next week on the show, I'm very excited to report that uh, we'll be chatting to uh, former manager John Gorman. That's really impressive. Very much looking forward to that. You might have seen it on social media. He'll be attending the game on Saturday at Adams Park and having a VIP uh, treatment as well. That yes. sounds like some sort of facial or something, doesn't it? It does, yes. <laughs> He's it's having... the new Wicker Wanderer Spa. You can come and have <laughs> VIP treatments. <laughs> <laughs> Available in the club shop. Yeah, indeed. I, I, the one thing that you didn't ask Jason McCarthy that I really think you should is what what did they do while they were in Yorkshire? I should have asked that, yeah. shouldn't I? Did they go to Betty's Tea Rooms? Yes, I and, hope so. And you know, and have a scone or scone, <laughs> depending on, on where, where I've actually come from. What did they do? You know, did Gareth get them running up and down the dales, uh, as it were, or the moors? And I very much like the fact as well that that he mentioned about how much he likes being up north and he mentioned the hills and the valleys and whatever and you think it's very appropriate actually that he's Wickham Wanderers manager that's why he's our manager because actually um, the geography of High Wickham reminds him uh, of being back home in Lancashire <laughs> We'll leave it there thank you very much uh, Do join us at the same time next week for the Wickham Wanderers show here at Wickham Sound Up the week <laughs> <laughs>